How's it going everyone? If you're new to the channel, I'm Alex from RoofTentInsider.com and if you're new to rooftop tent camping, you may have learned quite a bit and I'm sure there's still a lot that you would like to know about properly using your rooftop tent. So we're gonna do a quick and dirty rundown of the 13 must-have rooftop tent tips. So you may know some and you may not be familiar with others, but I'm sure you will find this super helpful as we go through each of the tips. So let's hop right into it. So the first tip that I wish I was told is that you need to water down your rooftop tent before you use it. And this is especially true if you're gonna be camping in rain or snow. So all you have to do is open up the tent, take the rain fly off and spray it down with a hose and then let it dry out completely before closing it. What this will do is allows that stitching to get a nice solid bond and will prevent from leaks or anything like that happening. I wish I knew about this. I think it should be more common knowledge. They don't really say it on any of the manuals or anything, but it really only takes a little bit of time to do. So I would take the time to do it, absolutely. And if you're looking to waterproof your tent just a little bit more, you can also use Fabric Guard, which I'll link to below. Maybe do it every season or so, or depending on how much you camp, you maybe do it a little bit more frequently. But nonetheless, it will really just help solidify that waterproof ability on your rooftop tent and it is stain proof as well, which is nice. Now a nice segue from that tip leads into our next one, which is to always pack the tent dry. And in some scenarios, you're not gonna be able to do this. So like I said, if you are camping in the rain, you can't really let the tent dry and then pack it. So you pack the tent up wet, but right when you get home, you gotta open that thing up or mildew will occur. Typically anywhere from 24 to 48 hours, mildew will start to grow. And once that takes hold, you're kind of SOL, to be honest with you. There's not much you can do to get rid of it. You can stop the growth, but getting rid of that smell and gross substance between the fabric is really mission impossible. So just take that time to properly let the tent dry out. You can even throw a fan in there to try to expedite that process once you get home. The next tip I would like to point out is picking the proper ladder type and also setting it up correctly. Now, if you do have a choice, always look for tents that have a telescoping ladder. Sliding ladders are fine because they're plenty strong and sturdy. However, they are just not as robust as a telescoping ladder. They're a complete pain in the butt to set up when it comes to trying to fit the little knobs into those pre-drilled holes. And then dirt will get into those tracks over time and they get kind of sticky. So overall, it's just a pain and I would recommend avoiding it. Now, when it comes to properly setting up your ladder, this is something I see a lot of people get wrong. They either put it in too steep or too much of an angle and you want it right around 70 to 80 degrees. Having it at a nice angle allows you to properly use the ladder and distribute the weight the way that it is meant to. So keep those in mind when you're using a rooftop tent. The next tip is to learn how to properly level your vehicle. And this is not not an exact science. I'll link to an article that I wrote exactly how I do it and the products I would recommend to do it with. But nonetheless, it's a pretty simple but time consuming process. You just wanna get the vehicle as level as possible so when you're sleeping in the tent, you're not rolling around because my first time I went out and the whole night I was thinking, yeah, I can definitely feel that this tent is at a solid angle. So you wanna get it right the first time and maybe go up and test the tent before you go and put your head down on the pillow. The next tip I would recommend is having a height advantage when you're packing and unpacking your rooftop tent. Now, if you have a hard shell, you can kind of ignore this because you're really lucky you have those gas struts and it will open super easily for you. However, if you have a soft shell, you feel my pain. You have to unzip or undo the Velcro for the cover on that tent and then do all the straps and then pop it open. And if you have a taller vehicle like myself, we have a lifted FJ Cruiser, it can be a workout. So what I would recommend is just bringing a stool so you have just a little bit of a height advantage because I'm fairly tall, but it's dang near impossible just to go and do it and not be sweating. So having a stool makes it a little bit easier because then I'm not hanging onto the side of the vehicle by the rails and trying to undo the cover and all of those straps on the rooftop tent. So I would highly recommend doing that and it's a very cheap option. Next would be to clean your tent frequently. Again, I will link to a blog that I wrote telling you exactly how to do this, but really an easy way to do it is just to water it down like I said before. If you do that, 
the fabric will be pretty clean and then you can also take the mattress out clean the mattress cover and then clean under the mattress as well you'd be surprised the amount of dirt and stuff that gets in there i would even recommend maybe bringing a small hand vacuum and cleaning it every four or five camping trips whatever you think is best for you if you're in a really sandy place you know probably doing it more frequently would be a good choice so cleaning your rooftop tent consistently will really help your tent's longevity over the lifespan of you owning it. My next tip is to make your bedding comfortable and this can be done by either an X-Bed Mega Mat or a mattress topper. If you go with a mattress topper, I would recommend keeping it below two inches thick so that the tent can still close completely. But having that extra couple of inches of padding is really a game changer and one of the best things about a rooftop tent is just that added comfort. So. Adding a mattress topper inside of that really amplifies that experience for me and it will ensure a good night of sleep for you. Next would be to find ways to mitigate your fuel consumption. So there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can add a fairing or depending on how you position your rooftop tent, it can also affect your gas mileage. If you have a hard shell rooftop tent, they will also be more fuel efficient because they are more aerodynamic. If you get a thinner rooftop tent then more of a thick one, it'll also have less drag on the freeway and be less noisy. So those are all some variables to consider and take into account. Adding a rooftop tent really, you can kind of feel it on your vehicle depending which one it is. Like I said, we drive an FJ Cruiser and I haven't noticed it too much. Uh, you will hear it if the music's off. So that's a little annoying, I guess, but you don't really notice it when the music's playing. But you will see that hit in gas mileage, which is typically about one to two miles per gallon. So. Just finding those little ways to improve the fuel efficiency of your vehicle I think is always a plus. My next tip would be to minimize your entry cost. And it might be too late for you, but it might not be. I bought our entire setup from the roof rack to the tent itself for $1,450 delivered. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with any of the pricing. Maybe you are. I think that is a crazy good deal. And I got all of it brand new. So that to me is super crucial. You don't have to spend $5,000 getting the perfect rooftop tent. The next tip I would like to add is bring a Jackery power station. These things are awesome for powering anything from laptops to phones to coolers. If you have some of those sweet portable refrigerated ones, the Jackery can do all of that and they come in different tiers. So personally, when I'm camping, I do like to do a little bit of content creation. So it is super nifty to have. And depending on your family size or how frequently you use it, you can get a different size battery. Another awesome feature is their solar panels, which can charge the power station. And it's just really nifty to have. You never know when you're going to need it. So just having those options is super handy. Next, you need to properly know all of the weight limits. And it took me hours to kind of understand everything that I really needed to know from the vehicle's roof to your vehicle's roof rack and also not over exceeding the weight limit of the tent. So there's a couple things that you need to know. The dynamic weight limit is simply how much the vehicle's roof rack can hold while the vehicle is in motion. And then static is just how much it can hold while it is not in motion. So when it is parked. Now the biggest one really to consider is dynamic because if the vehicle is in motion, that's really when you're gonna be exceeding that weight limit. So for example, my dynamic weight limit is 165 pounds and our tent is only 120. So if you stay under that 165 pound limit, then you're A-OK. -okay. I've seen some go up to 225 with the heavy duty bars from Yakima. And then if you have a permanent roof rack, like a slim line or a front runner, then those can probably hold even more because they're dispersed across the entirety of the vehicle. So know your weight limits. You don't want to exceed them. And obviously you want to have a safe camping trip. So just make sure you're versed on all of those things before you go out. Next would be do a test run. Before we went camping, I set up the tent, obviously, made sure everything was good, but then I didn't check to see how we would get our dog in there, and we were okay, we figured it out, but it wasn't how I thought it was. We actually had to get him up kind of using the tailgate and then get him in through the side. So I would honestly do a practice run. You don't wanna figure it out when you're out there. If, unless you have like a 10 pound dog, just carry him, up the la him or her up the ladder and you're gonna be fine. But for those bigger dogs, you kind of have to be creative. So keep that in mind. I would do a test run, especially with all of the components and just make sure everything is working before you find yourself out in the woods. 
Last but certainly not least is making sure it fits your vehicle. Before you purchase your rooftop tent, check the dimensions and make sure it will fit it. And also you wanna make sure it looks good too. That is hugely important because if it is too big, you can fit it on your vehicle, but it may look odd and uh, be an eyesore. So that kind of plays in a role with knowing your weight limits as well. Just verse yourself with the dimensions and weight limits of the tent. Now, all of these products I mentioned will be linked to the description below and those articles as well. However, I also linked to a whole article on this talking about all of the tips, which is really the one that I think you should look at. I just kind of deep dive things a little bit more, give some more details, and also offer some more advice on kind of why these things matter. Now, if you guys did like this video, give it that thumbs up, and also be sure to subscribe. I would love to have you as a subscriber. We come out with rooftop tent tips, uh, camping videos, overlanding stuff, all of that. We cover it here, and I would love to have you as a part of the channel. So with that said, I hope you found it helpful, and we'll see you on that next video.